Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see in my hands right here. This is the BCM OEM lightweight mid-length rifle. So uh, basically the OEM rifle concept is getting more and more popular these days, which I like. I think that's a good trend because a lot of people want to put their own handguard on there, their own stock, their own optic, etc. So it gives the user the option to do that, but still get a really quality base rifle, which it, this certainly is. So the stuff I put on there, because I know folks will ask, is the uh, Geissele MK4, MK14 rather, handguard. That's a 15 inch one. It's got the m lock sections on there. And then the optic we had on there was the Trijicon Patrol MRO with the exception of the uh, accuracy portion that we're gonna show you here in just a second. We used a different optic for that, of course. And the light on there is a Surefire uh, M312. Sights are Spiked Tactical Gen 2. And the vertical foregrip was Arasaka. I think that's pretty much everything we had on there. Oh yeah. Uh, stock was the Magpul SLS stock for those wondering. So what we're going to do now though is actually take a look and see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle here with this lightweight profile barrel. Should be interesting to see but I have high hopes. After that we're going to come back in, take a look at all the details and let you guys know what we think of this little rifle overall. <laughs> Time to see how accurate this rifle could be. Of course, it has the uh, lightweight profile barrel, so we'll see what it can do. We have the uh, Trijicon. This is a 2.5 by 10 power scope with a uh, American Defense Manufacturing mount on there, using a CTK Precision and a super high-tech uh, sock as a uh, rest in the rear. We have a few loads for you. The first up will be this Gorilla Ammunition. This is their 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg bullet one that's been relatively accurate in the past so we will see how it does the target is downrange at 100 yards Whew. not sure how apparent it is uh, through the lens but it is hot out here today it's about 104 there's no wind, which that never happens out here. And uh, it's about 90% humidity. So uh, we are steaming out here. Uh, next round we're gonna put up is the uh, Freedom Munitions. This is our 69 grain all point boat tail round. Um, for those that don't know, Freedom offers a viewer discount and that's down here in the bottom of your screen. So just use that code and you'll get 5% off any of the ammo over there. And sometimes with some of the other deals they have going on, it's just, that gives you a crazy deal. So. We'll put this down range and see how this one groups. But when I'm looking uh, down through the scope, because it's so hot out, I, I'm shooting on clay and everything between me and the target's clay. I can just see a crazy mirage going on. So hopefully that doesn't uh, cause too much of a problem. I don't think it will, but it's interesting what heat can do. That group looked pretty good. Got some people driving by here, watching the show apparently. Uh, next up, we should have some Hornady here. Yep, well this stuff here, it's the 75 grain, uh, super super performance match rather, to bolt tail hollow point round. And this is, comes courtesy of uh, Mass Ammo. They sent this out because no one at Hornady would ever take my uh, email, so they sent it out because a lot of viewers wanted to see me use Hornady in videos to see how it would do. So. There you go. So thanks to them. We'll put a link down below for those folks uh, who help the channel out here. So let's see how it'll do. Last group looks pretty good. Doesn't look too bad from here. The last group that we have is the uh, Fioki here. This is a 223 grain round, 77 uh, grain, Match King, all point boat tail. So we'll see how the old Fioki does. Hopefully the barrel heat isn't an issue. I mean, we're not firing too rapid, but you never know, especially with the temperature out here. Anyway, we'll see how it does. Oh, 
Let's go check them out. First up, we have the Gorilla Ammunition here. That one measured it at an inch and a quarter with this barrel. Then we came down with the Freedom, looks like the best group. Um, measuring it out center to center. We're right at three quarters of an inch, so sub MOA, always a good thing to see. Then uh, I believe we had the uh, Hornady here, if I'm correct. If not, I'll annotate it. We're right at 1.75 inches with that one center to center. And then the Fiocchi up here, which this is kind of going to be an interesting one to measure out. Regardless of how I measure it, we get right at an inch and a half. So uh, obviously we got a sub MOA five shot group with the rifle. Uh, that said, the barrel profile is not designed to be a match barrel, but it's certainly uh, designed to give you uh, good enough accuracy, which this is for almost any type of situation you could think of with the AR-15. If it's shooting sub MOA, I will take that. And uh, of course, the lightweight profile makes it a little bit handier as well. Getting into the details, we'll start out front and work our way back. So we do have a A2 muzzle device that comes with it. Uh, I was actually a little surprised by that. I thought they might include their uh, BCM uh, Comp Mod Zero, but nope, A2. And I'm totally okay with that. Long time viewers of the channel know I do like the A2. It's a very good overall muzzle device, hides flash well, and gives you a little bit of a compensation as well. The barrel is a lightweight profile like we just talked about out there during the accuracy. It does have a 6.25 inch uh, gas block on there. And of course the gas block is BCMs. Now for those folks who uh, didn't watch my um, install video for the Geissele handguard that we had on there, um, this gas block is of course dimpled in very deeply and then it's also got either some sort of rock set or red Loctite on there and it is very high temp. I had to actually use a torch for about three minutes to get it hot enough where I could actually remove it. So it's definitely uh, in there really solid so take it out put that back in and uh, it does come with the standard barrel nut not this one here this is for the Geissele handguard but it does come for, with a standard uh, GI barrel nut if you guys want to use that for the rails out there that are available for it but the barrel itself is of course a 16 inch barrel mid-length lightweight profile like we talked about it's a one in seven twist it's HP MP tested so it's high pressure tested magnetic particle inspected for each one it is mil spec steel in every way and one cool thing about BCM is that they actually have third-party testing of their barrels done frequently they pay for it they have it sent out and give you all the details of the exact materials that are in their barrels which is is pretty impressive so um, BCM barrels are just some of the best in the industry all around particularly for like fighting guns and uh, as you guys saw there they shoot well also which is also a nice thing of course along with the barrel the bolt carrier group of the AR-15 is sort of the heart and soul of it in my opinion and BCM is the standard for bolt carrier groups as far as I'm concerned anyway so the actual carrier itself is 8620 steel of course it is a full auto profile carrier we have properly staked um, screws there, gas key screws, and they're also not YFS. So that's something I've criticized in the past. A lot of companies are taking the YFS uh, screws, of course, and putting them in there. That's not mail spec. Of course, we have tool steel where there needs to be tool steel. It is chrome lined on both the gas key and the carrier. And just overall, very solid carrier. The bolt itself is individually HP and MP tested. So again, they fire the high pressure load, then do the magnetic particle inspection to make sure there's no micro cracks or anything that can't be seen with the naked eye. And um, of course, it's 158 carpenter steel as well. The extractor, again, made out of mil spec materials. One thing uh, that was a little odd to me though is that sometimes in the past I've gotten BCM uh, extractors that have the o-ring and the black insert and this one just has the black insert and the coil spring um, a lot of people who are sort of ar nuts will tell you that this is actually the best way to do it but it's just something uh, worth noting that i wanted to point out there and then of course the rest of the parts are all mil spec and one thing about bcm um, the reason i say it's sort of the standard a lot of folks would say colt is and i really wouldn't argue with that but the thing about bcm that's better than others in my opinion at least from what i've seen with seeing a lot of rifles in my day and also talking to folks who have seen them as well is that bcm has a really high quality control process so an actual person looks at every one of these goes through it um, and you know for instance i just bought a colt a rifle the other day and it didn't have the c stamp on there like they typically are supposed to do that's just the little things that you just don't see with bcm rifles if there's a problem they catch it and it generally doesn't go out the rifle comes with the BCM Mod 4 charging handle that you see here. It is, of course, Forge 7075 T6 aluminum as per mil spec, but it also has this little lever here on the backside. And what that does is allow you to a little bit more easily 
grab the uh, charging handle and run it should you uh, clear malfunctions or I know there's some folks that actually load the rifles like that um, let you do it a little bit easier than your standard mill spec button does now BCM makes ones with smaller latches and bigger latches they also make ambidextrous ones but the mod 4 is the one that I think a lot of people sort of lean to because it's sort of an in-between or all-around size so that's what comes with the OEM rifle both the upper and lower receiver are made of Forge 7075 T6 aluminum as per mil spec, as you would expect. Of course, we have the little BCM logo there on the side. We have the forward assist and the shell deflector. Again, mil spec stuff there. We have T marks on the top as well. So that way, if you're mounting and unmounting optics, you can sort of mark it and know you are always going back to the same place. The inside does have a dry film lubricant when you get it in. Uh, obviously, right now, you guys can't see that because I've been shooting it a good bit, but the rifle also has the M4 feed ramps cut into there, and of course the chamber and the barrel are chrome lined. Before getting into the lower, I wanted to point out that I did add this Geissele Maritime bolt catch. It does not come with it. It comes with the standard mil spec one, but the uh, rest of the lower itself is mil spec as well. So Ford 7075 T6, just like the upper, it doesn't have that stupid uh, block there that the Colt receivers have. So should one day our rights be restored, you would be able to actually drop a uh, auto sear in there, which is always a good thing. One thing I really like, and I don't know why any company would make it any other way, is that it has the flared magwell. Um, it just like aids and reloads and doesn't decrease the strength of the lower receiver in any way. Again, I think every AR company should make them that way. I don't know why they don't. The uh, trigger guard there is the BCM enhanced trigger guard. It gives you a little bit more room to prevent your finger scraping like it would uh, with the normal USGI one. And then of course the grip is the BCM gunfighter grip. It's got a little bit more of a vertical angle than your standard A2 would, which comes back like that. And it also comes up in front there to prevent your knuckle rubbing on the bottom of the uh, trigger guard there so it's very comfortable also has that high tang there allowing you to get really high up on there which i personally like as well the trigger that comes with the rifle is bcm's pnt trigger now this trigger has a lot going on although it looks like a mil spec trigger and in some ways feels like it um, basically all the contact surface are polished they also put a nickel based coating on it to smooth it up and make it a little bit slicker so when you actually uh, shoot it it does feel smoother no doubt than your standard usgi type trigger but the brake is smooth. It's right at about five pounds on my trigger gauge. There's very little play to it, as you guys can see. Basically, as soon as you get on it, a little bit of movement, and then it breaks. And then the reset, very tactile as well, as you guys can see there. The buffer is an H buffer, so it's a little bit heavier than your standard carbine buffer. And the extension is a 7075 T6 uh, mil spec six position adjustable extension this does also have the dry film lubricant in there as per mil spec which is also nice castle nut of course is staked this one's actually staked in two spots so it's sort of a little bit of a bonus there and then on the back the uh, plate on the back is the qd plate from bravo company so you can attach your sling uh, if it has a qd socket of course right there should you choose to do so We've covered most of the details of the rifle with the exception of price. So this one here comes in at $999. That's the list price over at Brownells anyway. Sometimes they have it on sale. You can get it for a little bit less, but it's not the cheapest OEM rifle out there for sure. But at least as far as I know of the OEM rifles that I've seen so far, it seems to be the best in my opinion in terms of just specs, build quality, uh, quality control, all the things that you expect from BCM, the little details that matter like the double staking, the excellent quality on the bolt carrier group, the barrel that shoots extremely well yet is lightweight like we talked about, the good trigger, the good grip, um, uh, upper receiver and extension having dry film lubricant, again the little things that go into making an excellent fighting rifle, BCM does them extremely well. So like I said, it's not the cheapest OEM rifle out there at all, absolutely not, but if I had to use any of the OEM rifles that are out there right now, at least as of today that I'm aware of, um, in a gunfight, this would be the one that I would pick hands down. So that's really kind of, I guess, the best compliment I could give it. But all in all, we've had a grand total of zero issues with it, as you'd expect. Um, I'm going to keep shooting it because some of the other accessories that I've been using on this rifle, I still uh, have reviews coming on, so we'll continue to put rounds through it. But at this point, I really think this rifle is going to be included into my uh, home defense setup when I'm done with these reviews because I really like it overall. It just balances really well with the lightweight up front. Uh, even with that 15-inch Geissele hand, guard it still is very lightweight very pointable um, due to the barrel profile of course and again it just shoots well it's reliable it's BCM so I can uh, feel very comfortable using it uh, should I have to do so to defend my family's life so that's 
pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about the rifle or anything else like that, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post those over at my Facebook page. As always, that's generally the best way to get in touch with me. I think I see more of those comments over there than I see here on the YouTube channel these days, but uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you guys are new here and aren't subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We'll see all of you guys in the next video.